I'm very happy to uh, have with us Evan Davis, uh, who's the economics editor of uh, BBC News, which means <coughs> he's pretty much the, the chief don, I'd say, of BBC News in terms of economics news. All of it goes, goes all the news goes through, uh, goes through him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we didn't pay a huge amount of fee because he's not he's only an economics journalist rather than a newsreader. <laughs> so, so, yeah. He's also in, uh, uh, he's also um, a presenter of um, um, a business uh, reality program called Dragon Sen. And also in his spare time he's authored two books called uh, Two Dictionaries. I might add. So if any economic terms are not clear of, I'm sure he's going to be able to uh, clear them up for us. So ladies and gentlemen, without taking further amount of your time, please put your, uh, run, put, put your hands together to uh, thank uh, and welcome Evan Davis. Thank you uh, everybody and thank you Shano. I'm, I'm incredibly happy to be here and I'm happy for three reasons. One is that it's actually a very well organized event um, and I get involved in the odd event and normally they pile on emails and all their anxieties and stresses about their events are sort of passed on to the person who they drag in to be uh, chairperson and Shahan has done none of that. It's been uh, most meticulously uh, organized. I'm also uh, happy because one of the things that happens if you're economics editor of the BBC is, is that the population at large think you're someone to whom they can write their general complaints about capitalism <laughs> and their, alternatives, their ideas for alternative structures. So I would say about 5 to 10 percent of the letters I get uh, are essentially redesigns of capitalism and what's wrong with it and how it could be reinvented uh, along the lines of the, the author's note. Often these are quite long letters, often they're books, uh, often they're in green ink. And I, um, by and large, I, some of them are mad, some of them are bad, and a lot of them I don't have time to read. But I'm always interested, genuinely interested, in big visionary critiques of the system on which I end up reporting so monotonously so often. Uh, and I, I, you know, I really am interested to hear, actually, what uh, we're going to hear uh, tonight, the critique, if you like, or a critique of a lot of what I end up reporting on. I'm also glad, thirdly glad, to be here, because I actually find I have a very a confession not to be taken outside these walls. I have very little understanding of monetary economics, even though I did a paper at Oxford called Monetary Economics. <laughs> and uh, it's all gone, I don't remember it. And our two speakers uh, both do understand it, uh, and understand it very well. Uh, so I might actually, uh, might actually learn something. Before we uh, get going, just actually how many of you are, would you say, work in banking, finance, or the city in some form or another. How many of you are basically finance people? Thank you. Most of you. How many of you work in something that would be recognizably Islamic finance of one kind or another? So a relatively small number. So most, the average person in this audience is basically someone working in a non-Islamic bank, basically. Okay, good. Um, the format for tonight is fairly straightforward. We're gonna have 15 minutes from Tarek, then 15 minutes from uh, Lord Brian Griffiths, uh, and then we're going to open it up to questions, in which uh, questions or comments, uh, preferably not speeches, but mini little speeches. Uh, and um, so we'll have a fa fairly open discussion, basically. We'll keep it fairly informal, and we will absolutely wind up before, uh, before half past ten. Let me, for those who don't... <laughs> before half past eight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, before half past eight. Uh, I, I'm fixed on the sort of 10 o'clock and um, number 10. Uh, <laughs> mind, so I, I get very much. Um, let me, for those of you who have not done, who do not know them, uh, introduce our two speakers. Our second speaker, because I'm doing them in reverse order, is Lord Griffiths, Brian Griffiths. Um, famous, really, in a number of circles for being head of Margaret Thatcher's policy unit in the 1980s. Um, involved in privatisation and deregulation in that era. Today, uh, famous for being the vice chair, vice chairman of Goldman Sachs, um, has written extensively on business ethics and the like, very much from a Christian perspective. Uh, in fact, I think is chairman of the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lambeth Trust and uh, has been involved in the church uh, in other ways too. Um, and also 
more recently when the uh, Shadow Chancellor uh, set up a committee to look at a commission, if you like, uh, to look at personal debt. Uh, I think you were the chairman of that commission, is that right? Yeah. Is it still going, that commission? No, we reported. The report is here. Oh, excellent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you want a copy to advertise. OK, okay. Yeah, we've, we've got a lot of people selling uh, books and these lines. Um, <laughs> which brings me, which brings me, free. <laughs> which brings me to our first speaker, uh, Tarek El Duwani. I don't know if, if any of you have seen it, but he is basically the author of The Problem with Interest, which is a um, well-written, cogent book uh, outlining the, uh, if you like, the critique of uh, interest-based financial capitalism. Ten pounds. Say again? Ten pounds. Ten pounds. Ten pounds. Ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tariq is also the founder of islamicfinance.com, where you will find a number of articles, uh, you'll find bits of the book, and you'll, you'll find um, you know, some surprising and witty uh, pastiches as well. Um, but What's good about him is he came from a financial background, so he knows what he's talking about. He was an interest rate derivative dealer here in the city, and um, then became head of Islamic finance for a city institution. So what I'm going to suggest is we have 15 minutes from each of them, and then we'll, uh, we'll have questions. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, uh, Evan, for that introduction. And uh, thank you, uh, Brian, for your uh, publications that uh, you've sent. I can call you Brian. Oh, please, of course. <laughs> um, for the publications that you sent to me, um, which I've read over the last two or three weeks. And it's quite clear um, that we share many similar sentiments. You want to see uh, a reduction in uh, poverty, you want to see increased financial stability, less wealth inequality. Uh, ways of protecting the environment, and I share all of the sentiments. Uh, of course, the, the question is, how do we achieve them? Uh, and I think you as a Christian and I as a Muslim should also share some of the methodology, at least, which is that the God who created us knows how we work better than we know ourselves. And so it's for him to set the law for us. Uh, and uh, if a man wishes to put his own law in place of God's law, then the results will be worse than they otherwise would be. And I think that's a, a common uh, theme through Judaism, Christianity, uh, and um, also uh, in Islam. Um, I, I'm going to get my watch, okay, because um, <laughs> 15 minutes isn't wrong to put the case for the prosecution, so it's been for 13 now. And I think that, uh, just to, to make a couple of points, that um, in Islam, the, the law of economics, the civil law, our muamalat, as we call it, is prohibitions based. So it doesn't tell you what you should do, it tells you what you shouldn't do. It's not for me to come to you and prove that a derivative or a bond uh, or a futures market is permissible. It's for you to come to me and show me that it's prohibited. And if you can do that, I have to give it up. But this is very important for us as Muslims because it means that when, when we address the economic sphere, it's not for us to come and say, look, here's this wonderful system that works and all the bells and whistles are you know, clean and, and, and smoothly operating. It's for us to say, don't do this, don't do that. Take away the bad things and then everything will be okay. That's the kind of methodology for us. And I think that when we look in the world today and, and we see in the, the economic sphere what's happening, um, that one of the, the major problems is that we have actually overridden one of the main prohibitions that God has sent us in economics, and that is the prohibition on usury. Now, there are differences in the interpretation of what usury actually means, certainly between Christianity and, and Islam. This thing called interest was, uh, it came along after a thousand years of Christianity, and uh, you know, the, the, it means something different to what it means in Islam. In Islam, any benefit that you receive on giving a loan is uh, prohibited any material benefit. You get rewarded in the, in the afterlife giving a loan, that's the basic idea. And I think people are coming to realize now, um, that should, <coughs> I think we should go to the, um, yeah, we're, we're at the wrong place on this actually. Perhaps if I can, yeah, we need to, someone needs to. <coughs> Don't worry, I won't count this as public. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have a problem because uh, today yeah. we have a, a situation where, for example, the United Nations Development Programme many years ago came out with some research. Uh, thank you very much. It's easy when you know how. Um, that shows the scale 
uh, of interest-bearing debt and the effects it has upon humanity. This is a 9-11 happening every few, uh, every few hours, actually. Uh, and thank God that journalists are now, several years later, beginning to understand that this is a, a real kind of uh, uh, weapon of economic terrorism. The debt was supposed to help countries develop. It was supposed to help them invest in their, their, their infrastructure, their business, generate profits and repay. Uh, but what actually happened over time is that the debts just kept on growing from one decade to the next. Now we're over $2 trillion in debt in the developing countries. And uh, I think that one of the reasons that we have this aid culture now is because the scale of the debt became so massive and there were so many failures over time uh, in the model as it was supposed to work vis-a-vis -vis how it did work that one of the few things we could think of in the West was to give aid. And I'm all in favour of giving aid. I think these are large sums to give to uh, any country. The problem, of course, is that we take back much more than we give. Um, and in a sense, aid has just become a kind of public relations exercise to keep the people happy, to make them think that something is being done. Uh, and I think that if we look wider afield, not just in the developing countries on their own, but as uh, Brian says in his Commission on Personal Debt, uh, the report which is full of fascinating information.